Football playoff semifinal at the 86th Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. It's our Monday media availability with the number one ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. Joining us on this Zoom is Alabama defensive coordinator Pete Golding, who will then be followed by linebacker Will Anderson Jr. Also occurring at this time on a separate Zooms are interviews with defensive back Jordan Battle, defensive lineman Fedarian Mathis, and linebacker Henry Toto. Please check your email for the log information to join that session. For the media attending today, please be sure to use the raised hand function to indicate you want to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation before asking your question. And uh, now we will go to questions from the media. Again, if you'll use the raise hand function, uh, we will call on you. So we'll begin with Nick Kelly from the Tuscaloosa News. Go ahead, Nick. Hey, Pete, uh, the last few games, uh, the Georgia game, the Auburn game, have been some really strong performances from your unit. Um, what was maybe a turning point late in the season for your guys on defense? You know, I mean, I, obviously I thought uh, early in the year, um, I thought we were locked in, focused, played pretty well early. Uh, then went through a little stretch there. Obviously the A&M game uh, didn't execute uh, versus a very good football team uh, that exploited some things, I thought. Uh, I thought that was kind of an eye opener for us uh, to kind of go back to our preparation and, and making sure we're doing the right things in practice uh, and instilling those habits that we need on Saturday. So I don't, I don't think it was a certain point. I, mean, I think obviously anytime you lose a football game, especially here, uh, I think you go back to the drawing board, but more importantly, uh, not, nothing really schematically as much as it is from a preparation standpoint and a practice standpoint of you know, how can we get fundamentally better uh, to where we're not missing tackles uh, from a communication aspect, we're not having bust uh, in the back end, and then from, from a run fit standpoint that you know, we're locked into solo space and we're pressing our gaps and, and getting guys off a double team. So I don't think it was a certain play. Uh, I think if it was a game, it was the A&M game. Obviously, there's still certain times after the A&M game that you know, we haven't played as well as we should have. Uh, but I think that's preparation throughout the week and getting guys locked in and communicate and be on the same page uh, for those guys to be able to play fast and play well. Our next question will come from Aaron Settles. Go ahead, Aaron. Aaron, go, go ahead. This is Aaron Souls from The Athletic. Um, you talked about some of, some of that inconsistency from your defense. Sometimes that was game to game. Sometimes it was quarter to quarter or drive to drive. That's when, if you look at the defense and the way they've been playing, sort of trending this last month of the season, um, what would you say the identity of this defense is? You know, I mean, I think hopefully we're getting to the identity of this defense of, of tough, competitive people uh, that love playing football, uh, that play with passion, uh, play with discipline, and play with great effort. You know, I think uh, obviously you can cover up a lot of mistakes, in my opinion, in football with speed and effort. And so we're not going to be perfect. Those kids aren't perfect. I'm not perfect. So there's going to be things that occur in the game uh, where we make a mistake. But if we're playing fast and we're playing tough and we're playing physical, I think sometimes you can hide those mistakes, you know, with effort. Um, so I think that's something that has shown up. Obviously, there's been games where it's been a negative yardage play or we've gotten off the field on third down. And I can assure you, all 11 were on the same page and do everything correctly. But, you know, one guy made a decision, you know, for maximum effort and, and, and to do a great job. And, you know, he beat his guy. So uh, I think a lot of it comes up in the preparation aspect of it. I think, obviously, you got to get 11 guys that feel comfortable with what you're doing. Uh, obviously, we see a lot of different things. Uh, that we don't prepare for. You know, obviously we prepare for everything they've done uh, and a history of wherever they've been. And then obviously we put issues on tape that we've had problems with throughout the year with other opponents uh, that we feel obviously they're going to try to do versus us uh, because it's been successful. So you, you try to prepare your guys for everything that they could see. Uh, obviously, they're on the chalkboard too, drawing up new things. So, you know, you got to have your guys comfortable within your defense to let the rules apply, you know, when they, they, they see something that they haven't practiced against. And I think with that comes uh, communication. Uh, and I think communication obviously is better with older players that have more experience uh, that have been in those situations. Uh, but it's our responsibility to put them in those places in practice, uh, to show them everything, have a plan for it, um, be able to execute and be able to communicate. Uh, so I think that's been the biggest difference to me the last couple of weeks. A, guys have been comfortable. Uh, I think there's been better communication on the field. Uh, I think there's been a better effort uh, overall to the football. And then I think we've tackled better. Uh, I think we're rallying to the ball and when we're vice tackling and trying to take shots at the ball. Uh, still wasn't where it should be. 
Um, obviously, getting the ball on the ground and creating turnovers, uh, something obviously we're still emphasizing, something that we, you know, we got to do a really good job of. But uh, I think the preparation throughout the week, the attention to detail, and trying to practice the right way. So then on Saturday or Friday night this week, obviously, uh, it's second nature. Okay, we'll go next to Mike Rodak. Go ahead, Mike. Keith, these, uh, these Alabama coordinator jobs historically have been a bit of a jumping off point for coaches to become head coaches. Just in these last couple of years, how do you feel like you've grown as a coach and just relative to some of the opportunities that might come your way in the future? Well, obviously, you know, I took this job, you know, to work for the best football coach to ever coach the game, in my opinion. You know, and so I learned something new every day. Um, I, I've always been one, regardless where I was at, uh, to be where my feet are. Uh, to do the best job where I'm at, to try to prepare our kids the best way, uh, to develop them on and off the field. So uh, I've always been one. I think if you do a really good job where you're at, which obviously a lot of people before me have, then opportunities will come. Um, I promise you I'm in no rush to be a head coach. Um, I think a lot of that is overrated. You know, I, I got in this profession to develop players, to be in that room, to have fun with them. And I think sometimes, depending upon where you're at, uh, you don't get that anymore. And so I make plenty enough money, more money than I ever thought I would coach in football, I can assure you that. So I'm in no rush. Uh, obviously, when those opportunities come, you weigh them, you know, as a family and see if it's the best for you and for them. But I enjoy where I'm at. I learn something new every day. We got great kids to work with. Uh, the University of Alabama is awesome to be, you know, our support system, our administration. So I love where I'm at. We'll go next to Michael Casagrande from AL.com. Go ahead, Michael. Yeah, Pete, how do you handle criticism from fans? <laughs> well, their name ain't on my paycheck, so I really don't listen to it. But, no, I think uh, – Obviously, you know, my old man was a high school coach growing up, so I think it was something I learned at an early age, you know, from my mom. It's like, look, some people are going to love your dad, some people are going to hate your dad, you know, so it's still your dad, you're always going to love your dad. But, you know, I, I don't listen to the outside noise, to be honest with you. You know, I think if you're a football coach and you do that, I think you get out of this profession pretty quick. You, know, you go start selling insurance and playing golf. So, you know, obviously, you know, there's no bigger critic on me than me. You know, obviously, Coach Saban does a great job and stays on top of us to make sure we're doing things correctly. Um, but also, I, I, obviously, I want to put a great product on the field. And that comes with great preparation throughout the week, uh, demanding that from your guys, making sure you're getting it in practice, obviously, schematically being sound and trying to get guys in the right place. Uh, but more importantly, throughout the week, demanding it. And then I think it shows up. So I, I don't get caught up in it, to be honest with you. I ain't no big media guy or all that type of stuff. You know, I try to work my butt off. and put our kids in the best position that we can for success and try to coach them throughout the week. Okay, we'll go to Katie Windham from Bama, Online, Bama Central. Go ahead, Katie. Coach, last time we got to talk to you at the beginning of fall camp, you said that Henry Toa Toa as a transfer was above and beyond from a leadership standpoint, which you'd ever seen in a transfer. What did you kind of see in him at that time to know that? And then how big has he been for your defense, both from a leadership and ability standpoint this year? Yeah, I mean, I think from a leadership standpoint, I think a lot of it, you know, is based kind of on your personality. And the one thing that I was impressed about him when he came in is he soaked it all up. He didn't come in the first day trying to tell folks what to do. He came in and kind of was aware of his surroundings, worked his butt off, uh, and tried to work harder than everybody else and tried to learn the defense. Uh, and he tried to learn our players and how we do it here and what's the expectations. And then I think once he got a grasp of that, um, then he decided to lead. And, and Henry's one of those guys that he's going to try to prepare harder than anybody else. Uh, he's going to try to work harder than anybody else, and he's going to try to practice harder than anybody else. But what he does is he brings people with him. And so, you know, he's going to go to those backers. That third week he was there, and he's like, hey, you know what? Four o'clock today, this is in the summer. I'm getting some extra tape. You know, if y'all want to come, come on. And it was a couple guys the first week, and then it was a couple more the next week. And by the end of the summer, it's all of them. And I think that's one thing. He's a by example guy, but guys appreciate how hard he works and how much he loves the game and what he puts into it. And so he naturally, I think people gravitate towards him. And I think he can bring people places they can't bring themselves. And I think that's leadership. Uh, but he's not one of those guys that's going to curse them out and grab them by the face mask and do all those things. Uh, I think it's by example and studying hard and preparing hard and practicing hard. And I think people see that turn into success on Saturday, not always like he wants it. Uh, he makes mistakes like everybody else, but I think from his energy, his effort, his attitude, uh, I think people want to mimic that, and I think he brings people with him. Okay, we'll go to Charlie Potter from Bama Online. Go ahead, Charlie. Yeah, hey, Coach. Uh, you, last year you talked a lot about Will Anderson as a freshman and just how impressed you were with him on and off the field. This year, obviously, his, his stats speak for themselves, but he stepped up as a leader as well. Just 
Have you ever seen anything like what Will has done these past few months on the field, off the field as a leader for your team? I mean, I, obviously you've had guys that I think have been able to impact a team. I, I think it's very rare to have a guy with his skill set, his ability to be the type of person that he is. You know, I think Coach mentioned this last year about last year's team. Like, it, it's rare for your best players to be your best leaders and your best people. You know, normally there's a flaw in people. And I'm not saying he doesn't have flaws, but uh, I ain't found one. You know, so, I mean, he, he, he's a kid that loves football, works his butt off. He's in there with Coach Sal all the time getting extra tape. And, and he's another guy that, that puts it on tape, you know, whether it's practice or a game. And so nobody can question his work ethic, his attitude, uh, his intensity. Uh, so when he steps at somebody, there's nothing they can say. And I think he's got a little different demeanor than Henry probably uh, of getting people to do certain things that they need to do to help us be a better football team. Um, so with the athletic ability, uh, with the character the kid has and the leadership, uh, he's definitely the total package. And that's why obviously he's received a lot of awards uh, and he's helped us win a lot of football games. He gets everything he deserves. Hey, next we'll go to Chris Vanini of The Athletic. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, uh, Pete, want to ask about uh, Cincinnati and Jerome Ford, who you were uh, briefly with there at Alabama, and, and his ability to hit big plays, but also quarterback Desmond Ritter. Curious what you see out of those two guys. Yeah, I mean, I, I think obviously they're undefeated for a reason. You know, I think they're coached extremely well. Uh, I think they got a very good scheme. Uh, I think they, they use all 11, meaning they run their quarterback as well. Uh, you know, that they, they work you horizontally and vertically. Um, so they're very challenging from that aspect. They do a really nice job with big people creating extra gaps uh, to make you be sound. Uh, I think obviously nine has played a lot of football. Uh, I think he gets in and out of certain plays, you know, at the right times based on coverages and fronts uh, in the run game and the pass game. And then I think Ford, obviously, you know, we knew he had elite speed coming out of high school. I think he was a 10-5 guy in high school. Uh, I think he's gotten a lot stronger. He's got a really strong lower body, uh, has a lot of yak yards. He's got good balance and body control. I think he's got good vision. Uh, they'll still use him out of the backfield. And then they got some guys on the perimeter as well, you know, with 12 outside that, you know, they say it's a 50-50 ball. It hadn't been with him all year. You know, they throw it up and he goes and gets it. And then, uh, you know, they got those two tight ends that are extremely long, um, that have really big catch radiuses uh, that they use in the pass game and in the C area blocking. So uh, they're a very successful offense. They do an extremely you know, good job. They're well coached. So we got our hands full uh, for sure. Okay, next we'll go to Tony Salakis. Go ahead, Tony. Hey, Pete. Um, just what have you seen from uh, Jalen Armour Davis in practice? And then how key is he in, in stopping th this big passing attack that you just kind of talked about in Cincinnati? Well, obviously, you know, Jalen for us has, you know, had a lot of experience in games. Uh, he's a smart football player. He's instinctive. Uh, he's one of our longer corners with top end speed. So, you know, we're playing longer guys this week that can run, can go up and catch the football. Uh, there are multiple offense and create a lot of formations by motions and shifts. Uh, so obviously the experience that he's had and the understanding of our defense uh, and the composure that he has, we need. Um, so he's practiced all week I and mean, he's looked well to me, you know, so it's good to have him back. Okay, next we'll go to Mitch Lucas. Go ahead, Mitch. Hey, Pete, I am uh, Mitch Lucas from the Kilbourne News Herald in Texas. Um, after watching uh, about every Alabama game this season, uh, one of your biggest losses to injury uh, it seems appears to be Josh Job. Uh, how will you guys get over the loss of Job for this game? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's whether it started last year or every year in football, you're gonna have some guys go down and then throw COVID on it, you know. So I think you got to develop the bottom of your roster, which I think coach does, you know, an extremely well and good job at, especially in camp and throughout the season of how we practice. So I think we got a lot of guys with bank practice reps, you know, and what we're doing. We've got some guys with game experience, you know, earlier in the season with some games that we got up on. So it's next man up around here. You know, we don't control that. We don't control the injuries. We don't control COVID. Um, so it's next man up. So we've got guys, you know, at the corner position, whether being Kool-Aid or some other guys that have played in games, have started games. Uh, and so they're going to have to step up. You know, there's no different for them. They got to lock in. They got to focus. Uh, got to be able to play the next play. And, you know, when their number's called, they got to be able to compete and contest the play. And so uh, I think we're ready. I think we got guys ready to play. Coach, we'll take one final question from Kerry from WVTM. Go ahead, Kerry. 
Hey, Coach, how are you? Good. I wanted to ask, obviously, um, we can't talk about any of this in the college football landscape without mentioning COVID. And I just want to know, do you have a preference or what would that preference be during this time to kind of have this limited access to all this extra stuff and all that those extra distractions? Or do you like that? Um, do you like that stuff normally for bowl weeks? You know what? Uh, you know, it kind of reminded me of fall camp. You know, we had like, I don't I can't remember what exactly it was, but like the second week of fall camp, we kind of revamped and went to mask and all those things. And it reminded me of last year. And that's what I brought up to our players. So, you know what? I said last year, a lot of guys made decisions to give up everything outside of this facility for one common goal. And it was an entire team. And it was going out, it was being with their family at certain times to, to work their butt off, to play for each other for one common goal, and that was to win a championship. And, and so I think that's what it brings me back to. I think that's what it brings our guys back to. We've been here before, we've done this before, you know, with the pandemic. And I, you can't be selfish. And you got to realize what you do, you do to everybody in that room. And we got a lot of guys that put a lot of work, you know, into this season. And uh, they've, got, they've given themselves the opportunity to be able to play and compete, you know, in the semifinal game. And, and who are you, you know, to take a chance on that? And, and so I think we've been through this, which has helped. Uh, I think we got very unselfish guys. I think we got good leadership on our football team. And they stood up the other day and was like, you know what? You know, so, you know one guy on our team said, you know, I've never experienced a bowl week, but I have experienced getting a national championship ring. They said, that's what we're here for. And so I think bowl games are a great concept, but, you know, we're, we're playing to win a championship. And in order to win a championship, you got to win this game versus a very quality, good football team. And so if our entire focus of every individual on our team is not on that, then we're not going to give ourselves our best chance. And so having been there before, I think our kids understand that through great leadership, obviously, of Coach Saban, but then through leadership of our team. And I, I don't think they're worried about going to the Cowboys game. I don't think they're worried about Six Flags. You know, I think they're worried about what then they do consistently play in and play out to put the best product on the field to be able to win the football game. And I think that's not easy, especially with guys at that age. But having been here in the culture that Coach Saban has set, that's what's expected. And that's what these kids expect. Coach Golding, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. We'll just get Coach linebacker Will Anderson up here in just a moment.